Hello, my name is Stephen Knight. This is a Trainerscope presentation. Today's topic is the Web Platform Installer, which is a free product from Microsoft that helps you get uh, the latest components from the Microsoft Web Platform, uh, including IIS, SQL Server Express, and also not just from the Microsoft set of technologies, but this also gives you access to a range of open source technologies PHP, MySQL, uh, WordPress, Joomla, Drupal. So let's uh, start with a bit of an overview. Uh, I'm on the Microsoft Web Platform Installer website. Link is in my blog. Uh, now, what we have here is just a bit of an overview where it talks about, well, how it's free. Hey, the price is right with this. And uh, if I scroll down a little ways, it just gives us a bit more of a story. Now, over here on the right, you'll see the download it now. I'm just going to click on the view specifications. And in a moment, I'll talk about the specifications. So first off, just to set the scene, the idea with the web platform installer or the web PI, as you'll see uh, Microsoft refer to it, is that it's a environment or a tool that allows you to download a range of different products. Now, some I mentioned in the intro from the Microsoft environment and a range of the open source tools that you can get. What's nice about this is it's to save you a lot of time. The various open source products are pre-configured to install in the Windows environment. So all the installation mucking about is set up for you. Now, for those of us where our aim is to get up and running with the tools as quickly as possible, uh, then that's the way to go. You can go to the websites for the various uh, technologies, the PHP, MySQL, WordPress, they all have their websites where you can download the components that you need and install them yourself. And particularly for those of you who are going to be administering these things, perhaps running them on your web server, then that's probably the way to go because you'll learn the whole process and the ins and outs of getting it all running. For people like me, where you're wanting to concentrate on developing something in the actual products like PHP, MySQL, WordPress or Joomla, then uh, this is saving a lot of time because you don't want to be a server guru, you want to be a WordPress guru or whatever. Now, so that's the first advantage in that it's pre-configured, ready to install, relatively painless. Now, some of you are probably thinking, okay, I've got my low-cost hosting like I would get with uh, HostGator, for example, and I would like to install WordPress. Why don't I just go to HostGator, tick the box, and it installs WordPress and PHP and MySQL and whatever else is needed. Well, you can do that, but the beauty with this is you can install it, have it running on your own system, and then uh, do development, do testing, uh, do study and experimentation yourself so that you're doing it effectively on your own environment so you're not having to worry about constraints that might exist on a commercial environment uh, and also you can learn and experiment, do pre-production versions of things so you might want to test something out before you upload it and install it in your own commercial environment or on a client's website. So this enables it, you to run it all on your own uh, machine or in a VM perhaps that you might be running. Now what we need uh, uh, is we need Windows 7, Windows Vista, uh, they do mention here in the supporting requirements that it will run on Windows XP. Not sure I'd want to be doing that, but okay, it will run on Windows XP. Uh, but just, uh, I would be suggesting uh, Windows 7 or Windows Vista. Or uh, you, if you've got uh, one of the Windows Server products running at home, perhaps in a uh, VM uh, you might have Windows Server 2008 or 2008 R2. Uh, these products will will run. We, we can install WebPI and have it actually running on a Windows Server. 
what I'm going to be doing here is I've got Windows 7 and I'm running iOS in my Windows 7 environment. Uh, and uh, so, but I'd also have VMs with uh, Windows Server on it, so I could be setting it up there if I wanted to to get into some of these products. In fact, ultimately, as I progress with my SharePoint studies, that's what I'll be doing. So enough of the overview, enough of me waffling on. First step for you would be click the big green button and download. Okay, so that's step one. Now step two is you need IIS. So I've gone into Control Panel in Windows and then in Control Panel I'm clicking on Programs and Features. What I would be doing from here is clicking on Turn Windows Features on or off. And if I just give that a moment, we can see uh, that we've listed all the various Windows features here and I've already installed IIS. All you would do is click the little box here to the left for IIS. You'll notice it's gone blue. That's just because I've installed the defaults. Uh, you could install everything, but I've just installed the defaults because that's enough for what I need. And I would suggest that's where you start. You can always come back in and switch on more features if you need them. So you would uh, tick the box here. It goes blue. You would go OK and it will install IIS for you. Okay, so that's step two, is we need to install IIS if we don't already have it, Internet Information Services. Step three is you would go to wherever you've downloaded the web platform installer and install that. And then step four is we're going to go into the installed web platform info installer and let's have a look and see what it's all about. Now for step four, at this point we've installed the web platform installer, we've installed IIS. If I go into control panel, into administrative items, and then into Internet Information Services Manager, and when I start that up, and I'll just reposition it just a little bit here, is we will see we've got web platform installer. Now when Thank you. 